Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Quran Stories. My name is Abdul. In this series, we will tell you the stories of prophets in Islam. The reason the prophets are held in such high regard is because they are a demonstration of Allah's commands put into action. The prophets, peace be upon them all, were all chosen by God to lead and guide a society that needed guidance. All the prophets that have lived on earth were given that task for their specific times, in their specific lands, with the people they lived amongst. Insha'Allah, today we will tell you the story of the first prophet in Islam, Prophet Adam alayhi salam. Let us begin. Bismillah. The story of Prophet Adam alayhi salam. The story of the Prophets starts with the story of Prophet Adam alayhi salam, the first human being. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent angels to different parts of the earth to collect soil for making the first man. The angels collected different types of soil from all over the earth. Some was soft, some hard, some white, and some black. With this soil, God created the first man, and the God named him Adam salam. But God did not give life to the figure just yet. It stood there for 40 long years, just like that. One day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blew his soul into the figure. Adam's body trembled into life. He sneezed and immediately said, All praise and thanks is due to God. He saw the fruits lying around and he longed for it. But before the spirit reached his legs, he tried to reach for the fruits. He jumped towards it, but how could he? His legs were still made of clay. He fell down trying to jump. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered all the angels to bow down before the Prophet. The angels obeyed him and bowed down. But don't think that they worshipped him, they bowed down as a sign of respect. One by one, all the angels prostrated before the Prophet, except Iblis. Do you know who Iblis was? Yes, he was the Shaitan. Iblis was made from the fire, so he claimed to be better than the Prophet. He refused to bow down before him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was very angry. He did not like the disobedience of Iblis. He was banished from paradise and never allowed him to enter again. Shaitan realized that he got punished because of the humans and he was very angry with them. He vowed to take revenge by misleading the humans. He planned to make them stop worshipping the true God and worship idols instead. Allah then taught Adam السلام, the names of every animal in the paradise. He learned the names of the lion, the sheep, camel, elephant, dove, peacock, and many, many more. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the Prophet absolute freedom in paradise. He was allowed to eat every fruit in the garden and everything as he wished, except for one thing. He was not allowed to eat the fruits of the forbidden tree. God told the Prophet that he should not eat the fruit of the forbidden tree. The Prophet agreed and he enjoyed his life in the paradise roaming around freely. The animals in paradise were his friends. He spent most of his time playing with the animals. However, the Prophet was alone in paradise and he did not have a partner to spend time with. The night when the Prophet was sleeping, God created the first woman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had created this woman from the ribs of the human. When he woke up, he was surprised to see a woman next to him. He named her Hawa because she was created from a living being. Both of them lived happily in the paradise for a long time. One day, Shaitan made a devious plan to get rid of the Prophet and his wife from paradise. He took the form of a snake and tricked the Prophet and his wife into eating the forbidden fruit. But even before they could finish eating the fruit, they knew they had committed a grave sin. They were now filled with pain, sadness, and shame. 
after eating the fruit of forbidden knowledge, they realized they were naked, and they ran to cover themselves up in leaves, and they were now scared. They knew God would punish them for their disobedience. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came to know about this, he was very angry. The Prophet and his wife were thrown out of paradise for disobeying his orders. They left paradise and descended upon the earth. The Prophet and his wife sat there crying. They were now repenting for their sins. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted their repentance because it was sincere. The truth is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew this would happen. He always knows things before they even occur. However, he did not force things to happen. He grants free will to the humans. The Prophet knew that life on earth was going to be very difficult. He had to build a house for them to live. Now they no longer had the pleasures they enjoyed in paradise. He had to work hard to feed his family. In a few years, Hawa gave birth to twins, Qabil and his sister. Later, she gave birth to another twins, again a boy and a girl. This time, they named the boy Habil. Both Habil and Qabil grew up. Qabil took to farming, working in the fields and growing crops. And when Habil grew up, he became a shepherd and took care of the sheep and other animals. When Habil and Qabil became adults, the Prophet decided to get them married. This was part of Allah's plan to populate the earth. Since there were no other females on earth, Allah revealed to Adam that he should marry each son to the twin sister of the other. Qabil's twin sister was beautiful, while Habil's sister was not that beautiful. Qabil was not happy, as he wanted to marry his own sister. He rebelled against Allah's command by refusing to accept his father's command. The Prophet was in a dilemma now. He wanted peace and harmony in his family. So he prayed to God and asked for his help. Allah revealed that each son must offer a sacrifice. The argument was settled now. It was decided that the one whose sacrifice is accepted will marry Qabil's sister. Habil collected the best lamb from his flock and offered it as sacrifice to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Qabil didn't want to offer the best fruits and vegetables as sacrifice. Instead, he chose bad vegetables and grains for sacrifice. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted the sacrifice of Habil, the one made by Qabil. The Prophet was present when they made their sacrifices, and it was decided that Habil would marry Qabil's sister. But Qabil was not at all happy. He was so angry that he wanted to kill Habil. One day, Habil was late in coming home. The Prophet was worried, and he asked Qabil to find his brother. Qabil agreed and went searching for Habil in the fields. At last, he found Habil walking toward home. Qabil was still angry with Habil, so when he met Habil, he told him, I will kill you. I refuse to see you happy while I am not. To which Habil replied, It would be more proper for you to search for the cause of your unhappiness, my brother. Allah accepts the deeds from those who serve him. Qabil was angry to hear this, and he picked up a stone to hit Habil. Habil saw this. And even though he was bigger and stronger than Qabil, he said, Even if you stretch your hand to kill me, I will never stretch my hand to harm you, because I fear Allah. This comment further angered Qabil, and he struck him with a stone, killing him instantly. This was the first death and the first act of crime committed by man on earth. When Qabil realized that Habil was dead, he was afraid. He didn't know what to do. He started thinking about ways to hide his sin. Qabil wandered from place to place with the dead body of Habil trying to hide it. His anger had subsided by now and he was full of guilt. It was then that he saw ravens fighting with each other. One raven killed the other during the fight and it fell down. The victorious bird then used its beaks and claws to dig a hole in the ground. It buried the dead bird and filled the hole with mud. When Qabil saw this, he knew what he had to do with the dead body of his brother. He then buried his brother. This 
was the first burial of a man. Qabil was ashamed of what he had done. Adam السلام, was sad by the loss of his two sons. One was dead and the other was won over by the devil. He warned his other children about shaitan and asked them to always obey the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Years passed. Adam السلام, grew old and his children spread all over the earth. When he realized his death was near, he appointed Shaith as the successor to his family. Before his death, the Prophet reassured his children that Allah would not leave man alone on earth. He would send his prophets to guide them. The prophets would have different names, traits and miracles, but they would be united in one thing, the call to worship Allah alone. The Prophet closed his eyes after saying this. The angels entered the room and surrounded him. When he recognized the angel of death among them, he smiled at him peacefully. After his death, Sheath took over the responsibilities and took care of the family. Did you like the story, kids? If you liked the video, don't forget to click that subscribe button and stay updated on all our videos. Please tell your friends about our channel as well. That's all for today, and before I leave, don't miss our next episode. It is the story of a prophet who built a huge ark. The story of Prophet Nuh alayhi salam.